Good morning, everyone. Are you familiar with the TV show House Hunters or House Hunters International? In that show, a person or a couple or a family are looking to move. And so in the show, on each episode, they look at three, uh, usually three different properties and they do a tour of each one and a walkthrough. And then at the end of the episode, they choose one. And then they say like six months later, and then they show the family happy in their new home. We're gonna do that today, but with land in Arizona and specifically Northwestern Arizona, specifically Mojave County. So we're getting super specific. We're looking at pieces of land that you can park an RV or a camper on. And you can do that legally and you can live in it legally as long as you meet a couple of basic requirements and we'll talk more about those requirements later on in the video as we go on in the video now am i looking to do this am i looking to to live in a camper on some land in arizona uh not really but i do like looking at land online and I like looking at cheap land and I like thinking of possibilities of what I could do in the future. And so this part of Arizona has very cheap land. You can get an acre of land for a couple thousand dollars. Uh, my requirements in this video for the pieces of land that we're gonna be looking at are that it has to be road accessible. I think the cheapest one we're gonna be looking at is about $3,000. If you wanna go to like the $2,000 mark, you can find pieces of land for that price but they're like in the middle of nowhere and there's no road access to them you'd have to build a road to get out there so for our purposes that's not especially practical and so I am about 15 minutes from the first spot that I wanted to show you and I'm also going to be showing you the little towns that are nearby that are close to these parcels of land and uh, I'm not at a town right now I'm actually at a lake this is Lake Mead the famous man-made lake near Las Vegas. The Hoover Dam is the dam that created this lake. I'm at the upper end of the lake, basically where the lake starts and Grand Canyon ends. So Grand Canyon is over this way, and this is the lake, obviously, and so I'm kind of in that area. Las Vegas is really not too far as the crow flies from here, but there's no direct route. You have to take a really roundabout way to get there. And it's actually raining right now. I've been rained on off and on all morning. The weather is kind of miserable today. And I'm not actually going to be buying land today, but I will tell you at the end of this video which of the several properties that we're gonna be seeing I would choose if I were to buy the land. And again, if I were to buy the land, if we were, so I'm married, I, I have a house, we live in Wyoming, and if I were to buy land here, it would be for my wife and I to come down here for like a month or two each winter. So basically we'd be uh, snowbirding in our camper on the property. And so that's kind of the, the thought process that I have. That's the use case that I theoretically have in mind for theoretically purchasing some of these properties. So this is the first town we're gonna to be taking a look at. This is called Mead View named for Lake Mead, of course. Population is 1,500. And in this town, there's a gas station, a couple of bars, a couple of restaurants, a post office, a couple of stores. There's a family dollar a few minutes down the road. This way, that's a small grocery store. And so this is the general area that our first piece of land, our first property is located in. It's about 10 minutes down the road this way but before going to that property i wanted to show you guys what we have going on in town here's the gas station that building right there is the little library this is the mead view chamber of commerce which has uh, several small businesses inside of it there's a, uh, a little restaurant there called the waffle cone here's a bar and restaurant this is Boathouse Cafe and Grill. And then we have Big Al's Trading Post on the left. And the post office on the right. Okay, now we'll go out to the property. I'm at property number one. This is 1.25 acres for $4,950 if you pay in cash, or you can finance it for between $125 and $250 a month. So let me show it to you. 
So first thing I noticed is that the road coming in here is absolutely terrible. Uh, it's actually a high clearance road to get here from this direction. I came in on this road here. Maybe the road is better over there. I don't know. I'll, I'll go out that way and see. But uh, there were two like really steep foot high edges to these two washes that I had to cross. And so the property goes from about the wash here over to like here and the distance between me and the Land Cruiser is about the same distance over here again that the land extends to, if that makes sense. So I'm standing basically in the middle of the property. And the thing to note about this is that most of this probably isn't very buildable because I'm on a hill, as you can probably tell. Uh, this area down here, totally doable. You could park your RV down here and uh, then you'd have this hill as some privacy or just for some nice views, you know, put some put some chairs up here, put a little, a little deck or a, a viewpoint up here. And it's actually pretty nice. You don't have neighbors too close to you. So you have a little bit of privacy. The closest neighbor is this home right here that I just saw has a water truck that pulled up to it. And so they're getting refilled with water. That's one thing to note about this area. And for all of these properties that we're gonna be visiting today, I think you could theoretically put a well in, but most people have, uh, have big water tanks and they have water delivered to those tanks. And so as far as the requirements for living legally in an RV or a camper on these properties, uh, the first one is that you have to have a septic tank installed. And that costs about seven and a half thousand or ten thousand dollars somewhere in that range. Uh, and then you have to pay like a couple hundred dollars a year. I think it was 170 something dollars a year for some sort of permit. Uh, I don't remember what that permit is, but I was talking with a friend about it. Shout out to Jason and Jen and Deb. Uh, they live in uh, not this place, but a nice plot of land. They have a couple of campers on it and they live there. And so I was chatting with, uh, with Jason about that. That's if you want to live here full time. That's what you do. If you want to just camp here, like occasionally, you are legally allowed to do that for two. Uh, let's see. It's, you can do it for 14 days at a time and you can do it for up to 30 days in a year. And you might be saying, oh, it's my land. I should be able to camp on it whenever I want. And okay, sure. But that's not what the law says. And so two weeks in at a time, two weeks at a time. Uh, and you can do that a couple of times in a one year period. And so you can do that without having to install the septic or anything like that. You can just camp on your raw land over here. What do I think? Of this property it's actually pretty cool i, I kind of like it it's got joshua trees it's just not very accessible uh, both in terms of the road and then also as far as the property itself goes you can't really build up on that ridge but uh i can imagine like a nice little camper or a, a tiny house over there and this would be an awesome little little hideaway and there's power close by just across the street there's some power lines and so if you did want to build something a little bit more permanent or have a little bit more uh comforts while you're out here camping or living in your in your camper then that would be doable i'm on my way to the next town now but i wanted to stop at kind of an intermediate town that i think is kind of a cool funky little town and show it to you guys i'm not going to look at any land here it's a little bit more expensive this is called dolan springs and uh land here is about you know starts at like seven eight thousand dollars uh, so we're not going to check it out, but it is a little bit of a more interesting town and the scenery is a little bit better. Let me show you. We have nice mountain views. This is the Mount Tipton Wilderness and the, the land around here has a, a lot of Joshua trees on it. So again, it's kind of nice. Joshua trees are pretty, uh, pretty attractive plants to have on your property. We have a crepe place and a sub shop and a juice bar, a Dollar General over in that direction. And then over here we have a hot dog place and a trading post and souvenir shop. See what I mean about it being just a little bit more, a little bit more colorful, maybe a little bit more interesting. Down at the far end of town there's a, a family dollar and there's a Mexican bakery that I just went to and got a donut and a concha. And uh, yeah, cool little town, Dolan Springs.
And so again, the land here is similar to the land out by Meadview, but a little bit more expensive because it's a more interesting town. The views are, I don't know if they're better, but the mountains are a little bit closer, maybe a little bit more accessible, although you are farther from Lake Mead. And then also you're closer to the main highway out there. So if you want to go to a bigger town, it's easier to get to. You know, you're closer to Las Vegas, closer to Kingman. And so, yeah, this is Dolan Springs. Let's now go on to the next town. We're now in the third town and it is Golden Valley, Arizona, population about 8,000. And this entire valley is populated, but the actual town itself, like the amenities of the town, are pretty locally concentrated along the highway right here. The highway is pretty busy. It's two lanes going in either direction. The town of Kingman, Arizona is about 15 minutes over in this direction. And that's a, that's a city. It's got a population of about 30,000, I think. And in the other direction, to my left, is Laughlin, Nevada, about 25 minutes away. So from here, we can see some of the town of Golden Valley. We got gas stations, we got a subway. We got a Sonic. Another gas station. And so again, it's just spread along, along the highway here. But the town itself extends a long way, like the town limits go a long way in either direction. And the next property we're gonna look at, property number two, is actually not even very close to the, the town center of Golden Valley here. It's like 25 minutes to the south. So let's, uh, let's head over in that direction. Here we are, property number two is this. 1.13 acres, $3,999. And again, this valley out here, where we are, is Golden Valley in between the mountains over to the west and the mountains over to the east. This is all Golden Valley. But the actual town of Golden Valley is about 25 minutes in this direction. The town of Kingman, or the city of Kingman, which is bigger, is about 18 minutes over here. First impressions here, this area is way more open and the flora is less interesting. You're into like desert plants, like there, there aren't any Joshua trees here or anything like that. But this is $1,000 cheaper, about $1,000 cheaper than the last property. You do have, uh, let me show you the other kind of properties around here, the neighbors that you would have out here. So really there's a mix. For example, over here, we have a traditional sticks and bricks site-built home and over here we have what looks like a shed some people use these sheds as tiny homes i can't quite tell if that's just being used as a shed or if that's being used as a tiny home we have a camper over here Not a whole lot in this direction. And then over here, looks like this guy's using it mostly as storage. I think he is, let's see, there is a camper right there. And then he has a shipping container and a uh, water storage container on top of that. Then he has some boats and other vehicles over there too. So what do you think? Worth $4,000? And again, at this spot, you'd be able to camp on it for a couple weeks at a time for about a month of the year. Or if you want to be permanent and legal here, you would need to put in the septic tank for between seven and $10,000. Then you'd probably want to clear like a path, clear out a driveway to get your vehicle in here. I don't know how much that would cost to do. Uh, you could of course also do it yourself. I don't know if you can see this, but that kind of aqua or teal outline is the, the rough uh, the rough outline of this property, and it's definitely deeper than it is wide. It's about twice as deep as it is wide. Right now, I am at the back corner, and so from here to there, to the car, is all this property. If you want a little bit of an idea of how much land this actually is, there you have it. This one also has much, much better road access than the last one. Although at the last one, on the way out, that side of the road was way better than the side I initially went in on. And so if you were to 
be in the market for a place like this to park a big camper on, to park an RV on, then yeah, you'd want to keep that in mind. I'd be much more comfortable bringing one of those here than at the first place. At the start of each House Hunters episode, the person or the people moving will be talking to a realtor or to their friend or whoever it is that's helping them find uh, their new spot. And they'll say, okay, this is what I want. I need this many bedrooms, this many bathrooms. I want this, I don't want this. I want to be kind of in this area. And then the realtor will take those things into account and try to find the perfect place for them. But sometimes the realtor or whoever's helping them kind of gets something out of left field or something that doesn't really meet the requirements that the person had, but still could be a good option. And they, they sometimes call that the wild card house. And I have a wild card property to show you guys. It's not really super cheap land, but I think it'll make sense once we get there, once I show it to you. And it's about 15 minutes away, so let's go take a look. Okay, guys, let me show you what we have here. So this is a 1.13 acre lot with a little cabin on it. 240 square feet the brush around the cabin. So it looks like the entire property has been cleared, which is nice. I think that would be less of an issue with uh, with the rodents and snakes and everything like that. And sorry for the wind, it just started picking up. A little eight by 10 shed with solar and a little wind turbine and a 300 gallon water tank. And then there's a little covered patio right there too as part of the cabin. There is no septic tank here, according to the Zillow listing, but that can be installed, of course. And they're asking $27,000. What do you think? Is that worth it? For a piece of cleared land with a couple of little structures on it? And great views. I mean, there's really no one in this immediate area. The closest neighbors are, let's see, looks like over here there are some, some trailers it looks like. On the drive here, I passed by just all kinds of, of little homes. I saw a bunch of campers, I saw motor homes, I saw a pickup truck camper without the truck, like a truck bed camper. I saw a, a regular house, like a site built home. What else did I see? I saw a couple of tiny houses. I saw some sheds that were turned into, into tiny houses. So, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out here. It's an interesting place to just kind of wander around. I'm not gonna go take a closer look at here. Like, I don't wanna go peer into the windows. I think that's kind of weird. Interesting little wild card, don't you think? Uh, the next spot we're gonna go to, I think is the farthest out. It's over in this direction somewhere. Uh, I don't really remember any details about it, but I have that all written down and I will tell you the details once we get there. Okay guys, well, I'm still trying to make my way to this third spot. The road here is just terrible. I've been driving on a dirt road for a good 20 or 30 minutes and it was not a good dirt road. I was super sandy in places, some big rocks in other places, some pretty big dips in others. Here, so this, this is a road, apparently, and the, the other end of the road goes up here. That's impossible. You can't drive up that. And so I'm angry. Uh, this is a stupid property. Do not buy this. Do not buy any land in this little area. This is, this is not an investment. This is a scam. This is a land developer trying to cheat people who haven't been to this property. This is so dumb. Uh, but I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost there. I think it's just another couple hundred feet. But yeah, this, this big gulch here stopped me in my tracks. Well, I'm there. It goes from the road kind of off in this direction. And that means it includes this dry wash down here. But who cares? This is stupid. Do not buy this land. I mean, there, there's a reason there aren't any campers, there aren't any homes out here. It's because this land isn't really accessible. Unless you wanted to build this by hauling in like a few two by fours at a time, there's just no way you could practically live out here. 
and the the road getting back to the highway is just going to get worse and worse over the years like this is this is a terrible idea i hate this spot this is a little street sign that they have here but look at what they're calling a street i mean that's not drivable that is not this is not a street that property is one acre and it'll set you back two thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars I wouldn't take it if you gave me $3,000. I'm in a bad mood because I drove that stupid road coming in here and I have to drive it back out again. So let me calm down a little bit. Let me go find a campsite somewhere in this general area. And then we'll talk about each property that we saw and then also each area that we talked about. I'll see you at camp, assuming I can get out of here. Welcome to camp. Beautiful spot, great views, nice and quiet, nice and private, no one else around. And to top it off, do you see that, that little bit of road in the middle right there? That is actually Route 66. So I'm camped about half a mile from the mother road. That's pretty cool. But let's get back to the task at hand. If we were on House Hunters, or land hunters in our case, what would we choose? What would I choose? Let's start with the, the towns first. As far as the towns go, I like, this is my, my ranking. I liked Dolan Springs the best, and then Meadview, and then Golden Valley. Dolan Springs was just kind of fun, quirky, colorful. I liked it. Uh, Meadview was small, but it, it felt kind of close-knit, and it had everything you need. And then Golden Valley, uh, the reason I'm just putting it down low is that uh, it's just not that pretty of a town, and it's not that pleasant to like interact with the town because of that highway that's going through the middle of it. Uh, it's like a 55 mile an hour highway, and you have to pull off of that to like go to the gas station or go to the restaurants or, or whatever, and uh, there's a lot of traffic on there going to and from Kingman, it's just, it's not super pleasant from that uh, that aspect. And then as far as the land goes, you know which one I'm not choosing. That third one was terrible. No one should buy that land. So that leaves us the first two. The Meadview one, the one that was up against a hill that had a couple of Joshua trees on it, and then the one that was in Golden Valley and was more flat. I think that if the scenario is that we are using this as a place to park a camper, for the winter, like if we're snowbirding, I think the answer has to be number two, the Golden Valley property, the flat one, because you can get a camper there. <laughs> you, it would be very hard to get a camper to that first spot, even on the on the side that was that was better, where the road was better. I don't know if you could really like turn around on that property if you had a trailer on your vehicle, and so just based on that, it would have to be the Golden Valley one. And I like the Golden Valley area. I like the I like the mountains around it. You know, the views are great. I like that it's close to Kingman. And so I think that's the spot that I would go to. So that was the $4,000 property, I think. Now, if I could make my perfect property, I would probably have the location be somewhere around Dolan Springs. But again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, those are a little bit more expensive, getting into seven, eight, nine thousand dollars $9,000 for those pieces of land. Um, but it would be in that area and it would have some Joshua trees on it and it would be flat. And yeah, I think, I think that's, that's about it. I think that would do it. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, the, the real question though is, so I don't have a camper, right? So this is all theoretical. We don't have a camper, but if I did have a camper, would I rather buy a piece of land like what we saw today or would I rather just boondock on BLM land, camp on BLM land like we're doing now? There's so much public land in the West that if you don't want neighbors, it's much easier to find that without paying like a billion dollars. It's much easier to find that by boondocking than by buying property. It's, it's tricky. I think that if we had a camper, I think we would just be boondocking. 
but if we found the right property, like if we had that that property with the little cabin on it, the $27,000 one, I really liked that spot. Again, that was in Golden Valley, great location, a little bit farther from the towns and a little bit harder to get to. It was, it was more driving on dirt roads to get there, but that was a really cool spot. I really liked that. The inside of the cabin, by the way, was not really, I mean, it was finished. Like there were, there were walls on the inside, there was drywall on the inside, but there weren't, like there was no kitchen, there was no bathroom. It was just an empty box inside. It was a nice looking white empty box inside. And so I think of all the things that we saw today, I would lean toward that. I would lean toward the $27,000 property. I thought that was a great little spot, but hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you would do if you were in the hypothetical situation that I described. If you were, if you had a camper and you wanted to come south for the winter or west for the winter, what would you do? Would you buy some land or would you just boondock? I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.